I think framing wise that will do you can see the Milky Way there quite clearly uh, and Jupiter and Saturn are kind of to the lower left Hello folks, tonight I'm off to another local campsite, it's another beautiful day and I'm going to be having a little test and play with this unit here which is a mechanical wind up star tracker called the Omegon Mini Track LX2. So maybe you're a beginner at astrophotography just looking to start out, want to dip your toes in the water but don't want to go to the expense and commitment yet of buying a telescope and a computerised mount. Or maybe you want some kit that you can strap to your rucksack and backpack out away from the urban lights, get away from the light pollution. <laughs> In principle, this device seems to tick a lot of boxes. Um, so let's see how we get on. Although tonight I'm at a normal campsite, the main application as I see it for me of this device is for when I go wild camping. Um, the actual mini track itself only weighs about 400 grams, so it's really lightweight. So this really for me is a ideal backpackable type unit. For when I... So hopefully it will still be clear as we go through the day today. And I'll bring you back a bit later on when I'm uh, hopefully at my campsite. My name's John and I make videos for my YouTube channel, The Camping Astronomer, on camping, astronomy and walking. If you enjoy this video then please check my channel out as you might find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. Bit of a nice campsite, I'm on my own virtually. It's um, mid-September, so it's uh, end of season. Kids have gone back to school, and this is a week night. Um, but yeah, it's great. So this this is the Omegon LX2 Clockwork Star Tracker, and I'm going to have a little go with it on the Milky Way, just to see what it's like. Um, it's on my lightweight tripod just the bog standard one that I use for photography and taking YouTube videos so there's nothing special about this whatsoever a couple of the ball heads that are used here are not particularly heavy duty uh, they just need to be able to cope with probably a couple of kilograms max but in reality my setups probably for 800 grams total I would say and all you've got to do with this is line it up roughly north. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, so it's kind of very basic polar alignment. Um, as they come, you get a little tube and all you've got to do is peer through the tube. And if Polaris is visible, then that's good enough. I've kind of upgraded to a five pound little finder scope just because I find that a lot easier and the maximum exposure time that you can get is 100 divided by the focal length of your lens so if you're using a 24 millimeter lens for example uh, you're going to get four minutes odd in terms of um, exposure time but I'm probably going to stick it to just two with a 24 millimeter lens the camera sits on top of the ball head there and you just point it at what you want to shoot it at so I'm just going to fix the camera on so having you fitted your camera onto the ball head you point it at what you want to shoot whilst trying not to kick the tripod because that's really annoying and then you need to focus the camera. So that's about it. That's actually pointing at Jupiter. Um, I know the Milky Way is running right alongside Jupiter at the moment. So uh, I'm going to try a, a two minute shot and see what happens. But having done this, what you then do is wind up the star tracker. 
So what we do is just wind up the star tracker with this knob here. Uh, maximum rotation is one turn. I'm going to do it a bit less than that. One turn gives you about an hour apparently. So we're going to go a quarter, a half, three quarters. I don't know whether you can hear it ticking there on this video, but it's ticking away. So we'll, we'll set the first shot off on the intervalometer just to see if it's um, pointing in the right direction and focused and everything. I think framing wise that will do you can see the Milky Way there quite clearly uh, and Jupiter and Saturn are kind of to the lower left so I'm going to just run with that and take maybe 22 minute shots and then we'll see what comes out of that. Inside it's um, proper food, it's actually quite nice, so it's not dehydrated uh, and it's fairly spicy this one. I like this one and there's a chicken korma one as well that they do, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Not as good as a steak I had a couple of weeks ago when I was camping, mind you, but that was a real treat, but this certainly do for now. Well, that's me back in the tent now. Um, It'll be very interesting to see how the uh, clockwork tracker has worked out, um, especially compared to the Star Adventurer that um, I generally use for this sort of thing. Potentially the clockwork tracker has an advantage for me in that it's very, very light, so it will enable me to uh, backpack it out to a, a wild camp, a remote location. Today I'm in a normal campsite just to test it out. But we'll know once I've processed the pictures. So um, when I've done that, I will come back and uh, do a bit of a summing up. But for now, good night. So overall, I've now processed the images and I'm pretty delighted with the results that have come out of it, to be honest. Um, I had a minor blooper on the first photograph that I took which was the one shown in the video where I was lining up the Milky Way with Jupiter and Saturn. Um, I got sidelined by eating my dinner and didn't realise that the trees were becoming more and more part of the image and obscuring the Milky Way. So in the end for that photograph I only ended up with three two minute exposures uh, but nonetheless when I put those together I still got a very pleasing image. What I then did was pointed further up in the sky at the star Altair, which has the Milky Way running alongside it. Um, and it's a fairly interesting piece of the Milky Way because you can easily see the dark dust lane that runs through the Milky Way. And finally, I pointed much higher up in the sky uh, at the star Deneb in Cygnus. And what I was trying to do there was capture some of the nebulosity that uh, fills that area some of the deep sky objects and I got um, the North American Nebula, the Butterfly Nebula, the Pelican Nebula and the Elephant's Trunk Nebula all just using a 24mm lens. I did subsequently take a, another picture uh, in the region of Cassiopeia. Just south of Cassiopeia is uh, the Perseus Double Cluster which is a well-known uh, deep sky object. Next to which lies two 
nebula, uh, relatively dim, the heart nebula and the soul nebula, and I was able to take photographs of those uh, using a 50 millimeter lens that came out really well. So I think uh, the conclusion for that really is that this device here, just fitted with a DSL DSLR camera, is capable of taking uh, very nice wide field shots of things like the Milky Way and entire constellations. It's also capable of capturing uh, some of the larger deep sky objects, which gives a lot of hope for people maybe who haven't got a telescope who still want to dabble with astrophotography. It's dead easy to use, so you, you don't have to have any real knowledge whatsoever. Um, so, in conclusion, then I'd say that you know I'm really chuffed with the with the unit here and the photographs that have come out with it. Uh, I took typically two minute exposures. I would have been able to push that with the 24 millimeter lens much further than that, probably closer to the four that the manufacturer recommends. Um, but I found two minutes is quite a good number because the longer the exposure, the more chance you've got of it being ruined by passing planes and satellites and cloud coming across and that sort of thing. Uh, and you probably have to pay a bit more attention to the setting up than I did. Uh, but yeah, overall, dead simple unit to set up. Inexpensive. Uh, this device here is under £150 in the UK at the moment. So it's a real good way, if you haven't got a telescope, of dipping your toe in the astrophotography world or backpacking your stuff out to a remote location to get some really nice shots that are better than, say, the individual 15 or 20 second exposure that you would get without the tracked mount. But anyhow, that's enough waffle from me. I'm sure you're uh, much more interested in seeing the actual pictures that come out. Um, so they follow next. Well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. Uh, if you did enjoy it though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.